Bank Negara Malaysia is expected to keep its key interest rate unchanged at 2.75% for a third consecutive meeting next Wednesday and for the rest of this year and next. This as inflation has cooled faster than expected, dropping to a nine-month low of 3.4% last month and approaching the top of the central bank's target range of 2-3%, said a Reuters report. Over 80% of economists, 21 of 25, in the April 24th to 27th Reuters poll expected Bank Negara to keep the overnight policy rate unchanged, while the remaining four forecasted 25 basis points rise. Quoting Chua Han Teng, economist at DBS, the report said Malaysia's moderating inflation path, as seen from the slowdown in both headline and core inflation for March, should be a relief to policymakers, even though inflation remains elevated. DBS is expecting Malaysia's economic growth to slow this year amid global external headwinds and sees BNM aiming to keep the monetary policy stance supportive of growth. A separate Reuters poll expects Malaysia's economic growth rate to more than half to 4% this year from 8.7% in 2022 and to recover only marginally to 4.6% next year. Lembaga Tabung Haji announced a profit distribution of 3.1% after zakat for 2022, maintaining the rate for the third straight year. This brings full-year distribution to 2.65 billion ringgit, up 7.7% from 2.46 billion ringgit a year ago. The Pilgrim Fund recorded gross income of 3.85 billion ringgit last year, a 3.5% improvement compared with 3.72 billion a year ago. Amid the higher gross income posted by the fund in 2022, Two, its Hajj financial support was low last year at around 200 million ringgit, with some 14,000 people having completed their pilgrimage. This year, the number of pilgrims is expected to rise to 31,000, with financial support estimated at close to 400 million ringgit and potentially higher. Separately, Tabung Haji, which has subscribed to 600 million ringgit worth of sukuk issued by Munaro ABS, said it is in discussions with various sukuk holders amid the issuer's failure to redeem its sukuk in January. It is also in discussions with Telecom Malaysia, which wants to end its lease in Monaro ABS-owned Monaro TM in Bangsa. Tabung Haji CEO Datuk Sri Amrin Awaluddin said TM's decision to vacate the building will have an impact on Tabung Haji, but it is hopeful for a positive outcome. Malaysia Airport's holdings labelled postings on social media relating a purported deal between the airport's operator and another company as misleading and false. In a statement, MHB stressed that as a public-listed company and a GLC, it adheres to a very robust structure and process of governance. It also stated that it does not comment, neither can it comment on any transactions that are still ongoing its robust structure and process of governance. The company said it would not hesitate to take any legal remedies and or actions to protect itself and its reputation. MHB said it is making the clarification after a series of postings surfaced on social media relating to this purported deal. Its shares were trading 1.4% lower at 7 ringgit 5 cent at the close, giving the group a market capitalization of 11.7 billion ringgit. DXN Holdings, which is returning to the main market of Bursa Malaysia after 12 years, has fixed an IPO price of up to 76 cents per share, translating into a market capitalization of 3.79 billion ringgit upon its slated listing on May 19th. The Dietary Supplement Direct Sellers IPO comprises an offer for sale of up to 772.68 million existing shares and a public issuance of 160 million new shares. The final IPO price will be determined via a book building exercise. The exercise is expected to raise 121.6 million ringgit, of which 80 million ringgit or 65.8% has been earmarked for repayment of bank borrowings, up to 17.51 million ringgit or 14.4% for working capital, and 24.09 million ringgit or 19.8% for listing expenses. DX and CEO Tio Hang Cheng explained the reason for the privatization in 2011 was to restructure the 
company, following which sales have risen by 345% at a CAGR of 14.5% and more manufacturing plants have been set up. He said DXN is now relisting to reinforce its reputation in the market and elevate it to compete with key direct selling market players. Mark Rating said an inter-supplemental concession agreement with the government last November to extend its toll concession on the KL Kara Highway and Phase 1 of the East Coast Expressway to 2069. It said no material development has taken place since the execution of the deal, but it understands that Ane has scheduled a Sukuk holders meeting on May 9th in relation to the agreement. This confirms a report in the Edge Weekly last month that a concession extension had been shored up between Ane and Putrajaya just prior to the 15th general election. The concession was previously slated to expire in 2032. Also substantiated was the over 2 billion ringgit lane widening and flood mitigation works attached to the agreement. Mark ratings also highlighted that under the agreement, a new toll structure will be implemented in 2027. In the interim, no toll compensation from 2022 onwards will be provided.